After the training comes the hunting, it's moose hounds on ball. We have new kit from America's biggest gun show, the SHOT Show, currently underway in Las Vegas. Rhinos will be gone in a decade. We have an exclusive interview with rhino farmer Pete Warren. If you're worth more dead than alive, you will die. And shooting his load, Roy makes up some new rounds for his ticker in 2506. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Tim is in Sweden and after seeing the incredible work they do training dogs to hunt boar here at Mamimi Yacht, he is now getting a chance to hunt boar on One foot hour. with a highly skilled moose dog, which thankfully knows the difference. Okay, we're in day two of our wild boar experience in Sweden. Tough day yesterday, very warm. Went through two dogs, so we, we called it quits and we now have a beer. Second day, and we're with the boss with a gaffer, <laughs> with uh, Lars here, and we've got a, uh, a uh, I don't know if you call it a thoroughbred, but it's a pure uh, moose hound. Yeah. And you, and what do you call it? It's a yemter and it's a Swedish moose dog. So we've got the real deal then, have we? Yeah? Yeah, I hope so anyway, we'll try it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it caught Moller? Moller, yeah. Six well, years old. Six, power. yeah. So uh, I think it's now time to let it go and yep. see if we can. Uh, find ourselves a boar. Definitely. Yeah? Yeah, we'll give it a try anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We got the win right as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Lars has been training dogs and hunting with them for years. As Moller works the forest, Tim finds out more about this style of hunting, which is booming in Sweden as the numbers of boar explode. When you go out, you always have a couple of friends with you. It's, it's good fun. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's nice to it be is. a couple of guys together as well. Yeah. And they'll sit and wait and you're here after. It's one of the things that's good fun with this type of dog is that it's a dog you go with on your own. And that means you have all time in the world when you go with it when you're walking. Yeah. The guy that sits in the high seat, he wants to have action. Yeah. So after half an hour, he says, have you heard anything? <laughs> Are they coming? You know, they, 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 they want things to happen. And now we found him. He came barking. I'll see how far yeah, he is. That's, that's quite 300, 300, meters, meters, 300 yeah. meters away. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is 300 yeah. meters away. 200, no, not that, 225. Oh, I feel an awful lot better for that. <laughs> So it's that's quite normal, you know, they take the wind, they go up and, and uh, that's the amazing thing. You, you stand here talking, chatting, and then you hear it. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. Then the hunt starts. Game on, game then, on. Uh, then, uh, then the difficult things come <laughs> now for us. <laughs> We've got to start doing the work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He's done his for the start. Yep, yep. <laughs> Now you can see he's standing, and, and that's the, the, the picture here shows that he's standing. Sit down. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And on the map you can see where we are, and he's standing there. That's our position. That's the car we put outside, and uh, he's, he's been running through this area here and down up the wind and got it there. Oh, I see. So yeah, he's yeah. standing so there he, exactly now. So we're, we're here. We're here there. Yeah. And he's over here somewhere. We're going to cross those two. Well, yeah, I don't, I, we can't call them mountains, we call You've them hills. Hills, yeah, yeah. hillocks, hillocks. Oh, that'd be better, yeah. Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. Sweet yeah. Swedish mountains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Southern Swedish mountains. You're here now. The dog's getting really excited. No, it's not it, that's not it. Yeah? He's, yeah, you can say he's getting excited, but he's got a, he's got a, they, uh, they're chasing him now. Oh, right. You can hear that. He's, I used to say he screamed like a girl when yeah, they yeah. chase him. Now he's, now they're running. He's quiet now. 
So you see, now you can see on this side, you see he's running. Oh, he's running, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now he's running. He's <laughs> you can follow that and I, I can hear it because uh, see. I know how he reacts because I know the dog very well. As, as a hunter, you've got no idea how aggressive that boar is, what he's going to do, what the dog's going to do, so you've got to be really alert. Yeah, yeah, you have to yeah, be. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. charging and yeah. and attacking humans yeah. how you know, how much of a problem is that is it just yeah, when they're yeah. injured or when they're with with um, yeah. with piglets or yeah definitely but of course every time you go out with a dog you what do you say you seek the problem yes <laughs> because the, the dog is, is is going for the wild boy and you're going into the area where where the problem is and not the problem where you have the stand for the, with the dog of course and and if they attack I don't think they will attack you but they will attack the dog mm. and if you're in the way and but, but I'm nearly 100% you can say for sure if a wild boar comes out like this towards you and the head is like that and he's running flat out against you, as soon as he's three, four, five meters away from you, he will go that way. If the head is pointed that way, he'll still run towards you, but yeah. he'll go that way. But if he's facing straight to you, then you find a tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got, got the dog down the bottom about 50 meters away and the, the boar actually in the bracken and they're, not, they're, they're just not moving. So what Lars is going to do, he's going to work his way around and the wind's blowing towards us. He's going to go upwind of them. If they, if they catch a slight scent, they're very, very sensitive smell, he may just push them towards us. Um, it's not easy because I've still got to consider Lars. <laughs> don't want to shoot the gaffer. <clears throat> not a good thing. Um, so they're hopefully that uh, they would run down towards here, but it's uh, pretty easy. <laughs> Wow, and that is what you call proper, proper hunting. Two boar came flying out of the bracken and through a thick, the thick cover here. I couldn't see them, couldn't see them, then I could and I couldn't through here. And suddenly had an open area here. We had a, the bigger, darker boar and the, and the slightly smaller one behind it. And uh, unfortunately I lost sight of the, the bigger one because that's one um, I was home to shoot. But I was on the, on the uh, smaller one, followed through, probably about 40 metres away, just followed through. And uh, it was a great shot, she just, just knocked it over straight away. So, uh, and uh, fortunately, obviously the dog was kind of about 30 meters behind, so it made it quite a safe job. But it's one of those other things the hunters really, really got to consider, is that dog's generally behind that boar, and you can't make a mistake. So, uh, wow, that was really exciting. It's taken us probably two and a half hours to uh, eventually find this, this, uh, this uh, wild boar. But that's true Swedish hunting with dogs, and that's what we came for. So. I'm, uh, it's absolutely been a superb experience. Thank you. No, absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love that. The whole two hours of it, just uh, oh, real hunt. And I think, I, I think, I mean, also for the for the dog. I think what was so exciting is, is the dog was obviously holding these these pig back, yeah, yeah, yeah. and suddenly the the pig turned on the dog, yeah. and the, and the dog went, yeah. and, and they just come straight through. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. There he comes. There he comes. Smelling where is it? <laughs> Good, well done. You are a brave dog, you are. Yeah, he's, sometimes you wonder if he's brave or dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I think also it's not easy. No. You, you do need to have a, a really good dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the hunter needs to be pretty well trained, yeah. so you can't just walk out and shoot no, a ball. No. We just demonstrate it. It's quite tough. It's you know? tough, it is. And uh, a lot of people think uh, I'll get a dog and then I'll start hunting wild boars. <laughs> uh, it's, I would say, some people say it's one out of ten, I would say it's one out of twenty-five that would be, be good maybe. Wow. Sometimes it's even worse, but it, it's difficult to get a good dog that will, that will... A lot of dogs will maybe chase this type of wild boar, but as soon as you get them a little bit bigger, bigger. they'll just... Oh, no, that's no. a big one, and they'll go the other way. <laughs> a lot of times, but... 
Okay. It's good fun. It's a fantastic, uh, I think it's a fantastic wildlife in, in our forest and I love it. So Tim bags his boar and comes away with a far better understanding of how effective the Swedes are at using these brave dogs to hunt out boar. If you want to find out more about dog training at the centre, go to mamimayakt.se. Well done, Mr Pillbeam. Sweden looking a lot warmer than normal for this time of year. Now, someone who doesn't look normal at any time of year, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. In an exclusive interview with us, one of the world's largest rhino farmers claims that rhinos will be lost from the wild within a decade. Pete Warren, who once appeared with Louis Theroux in a documentary about lion hunting, has reacted to the recent decision by CITES to not allow free trade in rhino horns. He describes rhinos as walking gold mines and worries that unless things change, they'll be lost. It's an old saying, if you're worth more dead than alive, you will die. George Digweed, MBE, has managed to escape a tractor fire. The top game shot and 26 times world champion was mowing maize at his chute when his machine burst into flames. It's the latest horror in a tough 12 months for George. Last year he saw the masked men who attacked him and his wife at their home sent to prison for life. A 47 point buck is the new world record for a non-typical white-tailed deer. Stephen Tucker, who's 26, shot the deer with a muzzleloader in Tennessee. The deer, dubbed the Tennessee Tucker Buck, had a rack that scored 312 and 3 eighths on the Boone and Crockett tabulation. A girl who put a picture of her first deer on her t-shirt and then wore it to school was shamed by her teacher. When nine-year-old Dominique Yatsko from Northeast Ohio, USA, displayed the buck she shot on a t-shirt, her teacher said that killing animals is not what we do. Now Dominique's mother wants an apology. A South African farm worker was lucky to escape with his life after a leopard attacked him. Graphic images coming up. Sway Lake Diane was shooting small predators when he came across the large leopard in a dense bush. He spotted the animal as it charged him, hitting him in the chest and knocking him unconscious. The Big Tom was later shot by a member of the hunting party. Antis are furious for Beirut hunters shooting seagulls on a rubbish dump. But it's more complicated than that. The pest control job is actually safeguarding the airport from bird strikes. The Lebanon Eco Movement says the government has a duty to protect all birds under environmental laws. And finally, Antis are trying to ban an ancient bull taming festival. It takes place in Jalakutu, where young men try out their strength against a bull, and it's under threat from politicians. It was nominally outlawed by the country's Supreme Court in 2014, but still continues in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, where it's been held for thousands of years. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And news is something we're going to focus on much more in 2017. So much so we have bought the BBC. Only joking. But we have created a Field Sports News Hub. And you can find out more about that on Facebook via our website, where if you are a WWW Ninja, you can even follow us on RSS. It will have everything you need to know about hunting and shooting news, which is, of course, everything that is important apart from breeding. Next up top brass Roy Lupton gets out his scales and teases out his load grain by grain. Well we've got a nice new 2506 that we've been playing with and so far we've just been shooting factory ammunition out of it. We're getting um, a sub 1 MOA group out of the rifle at the moment but I, th I still think that we can improve on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to re do some reloading for it. So we've got a brand new RCBS um, reloading kit and we're going to do some unboxing and literally just go through from start to finish um, a very brief overview of reloading. And when I started reloading, it, it filled me with fear and dread because you just think, oh, crikey, it's going to be you know really complicated. You're going to have to do lots of reading, lots of research. But and I, I think with reloading, you can take it as far as you want to take it. You can get into it, work up a load, 
to a, a stage that you're happy with or you can take it to the nth degree and it really depends what sort of personality you are. If I can get something that's clover leafing, you know, I'll be happy. But as I say, we're just going to set it up to show how simple it is to set up and how quickly and easily you can make some rounds. One caveat I will put in is to make sure that you put yourself away, tuck yourself away, because you don't want any outside distractions. So make yourself a cup of tea, take a couple of biscuits, turn your phone off and just concentrate on what you're doing. It's only taken five or ten minutes just to set up the stand um, on the work surface and um, as I say it would be a little bit quicker yeah, if it was um, just stored away in a box and it wasn't all new but we just had to re-familiarise ourselves with um, a couple of the bits in there and then we shall be ready to kick off. There we go down, so we're just going to get this in line so we just tighten that collet up. And with the magic of television, that is 20 done in less than a second. So a couple of other pieces of equipment that's not included in the kit that you definitely need. A powder trickler and a, a very, very accurate set of digital calipers. There we go, 2506 Remington. I'm primarily looking for around for Chinese water deer, muntjac, roe and fox. So we can go a little bit lighter on the grain weights. I think we'll try out the 100 grain and the 87s to start off with, with Vitavori and 160, which we've got just here. The max that we want to use is 54, we'll do four sets of five, so we're going to back off from the maximum, we'll come down, I think the mid range on here is saying 52, so we will go um, 52 and a half grains and work up from there uh, to just under the maximum and see where that takes us. So we've got the um, boat tail soft point 100 grains that we're going to be using. So touch it in, give it a twist, and then we seat it down. And everyone, we just check with the calipers. As I say, we want this to be about 3 to 40. There's our 20 rounds. What we're going to do is we're going to go and shoot three shot groups. Um, if we get pretty much where we want with the three shot groups, then it gives us a couple of shots just to see how they're going out at 200 and 300 possibly. So we'll have a play with that um, and see what works. Okay, so we're now out on the range as if by magic. We've got the different types of rounds and we've got a couple of factory that we're gonna put through as well. Now, we're not bothered at all about zero. All we're bothered about on this exercise is just what grouping we're getting from each of the uh, sets of rounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the factory, see what we get from the factory. In between every set of rounds, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the rifle down and let it cool. Now, the Tika T3 um, that we've got here in 2506 is um, a lightweight model, so the barrel is not a heavy weight, it's not a varmint barrel, so we are just, because we want to do three shot rounds, we're just going to let it cool a little bit, clean it in between, and then hopefully that will give us a, a true indication of, of what we're doing. It is a little bit laborious, but to get the exact information that we want from putting the time in to reloading then it's worth spending the extra couple of minutes each time just cleaning the rifle. Okay now let's see if our efforts this morning were worth it or not. We're going to do three shot groups again. Okay so I'm just checking the cases as we're going up in the loads to make sure we've got no signs of excess pressure on the cases. So everything looks to be absolutely fine up there. So we'll have a, another quick clean down. We're losing light rapidly now, which is a, a shame. So we might have to put a little bit of light from the truck on the target just to make sure it's a, a fair test. Okay, so let's just have a quick run through. We've got the 52.5s here, so we've got two and one away a little bit. It's that third one that we're losing it at, and when we're going back up to maximum, up to 54, we're, we're coming apart again, so we'll have a, 
another batch of rounds just with a couple of different alterations on that and just see if we can get the group together and then clover leafing but yeah I mean from a from an initial start off nothing's overly concerning nothing's overly bad but nothing's overly brilliant with that so um, yeah, I mean they're, they're workable groups and you could pretty much take all of those out and, and safely go and shoot a fox or go and stalk a deer um, but from my own personal perspective I do like to get them a little bit closer than that to start with. We've been away um, obviously made up some different rounds we found a powder charge that was yeah, coming together but now what we've done is we've uh, messed around and we've changed the seating depth of the bullets in the cases so we've altered the overall length of the cartridge so we've got a few different batches at different lengths and we're just going to see what works best so we've stayed with the same powder charge and all we've done now is just come in on the seating depth at different levels um, down to about a standard factory level um, and now we're just going to see what results we get so nothing again it, the, the reloading we're doing is um, is not rocket science it's all pretty simple stuff so we're just going to make sure that we're shooting each set through a clean barrel um, and hopefully we shall get better results than we did just with altering the powder charge yeah baby I think we might have found the solution. Excellent. And bearing in mind, I'm not the most flexible of people, as my other half will contest to. But um, yeah, I mean, we were shooting on the side of a hill there, um, shooting down and contorting myself around the grass on this particular bit of hill. But I'm quite happy with that grouping there. I think we are pretty much ready to take this out and. Uh, start extending the ranges. As I say, we've been out with it already, with the factory loads, we've taken it out and we've stalked with it, because the grouping we've got was absolutely acceptable to go stalking with. Um, but with the reloading, I think it's now allowed us to really tighten that group up, so we've got the confidence to go out and really start extending the ranges. Almost perfect, almost what I was looking for. So we've got two shots through this hole here, and one that's touching up there. So. You can't really get a lot better than that. Um, I mean, that one just being a little bit higher could have probably been my error. So, um, but as I say, when you're when you're shooting in these conditions and shooting on the side of the hill and uh, with everything else, I'll take that one. So, and we're uh, we're more than happy with that. I think it is now time to go home, have a well-deserved cup of tea, and then we can come out and play on a better day and see what we can do. Thank you, Roy. Now from the North Downs to the rest of the world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewers recommend Riven Wild Boar Hunting 2016 by Folk VH. It's a GoPro film. He's in the forests of the Czech Republic on a good stand for Kyla. And there is no German. Staying on pigs and to remind everyone that the Northern Hemisphere is a bit grey at the moment, here is one from a place that's the opposite right now. Heatwave Hogs is Zubtex solo hunting big boar vlog in the 40 degree heat of New South Wales, Australia. Over in New Zealand, Clark Boys Hunting NZ is one of my favourite gangs of Kiwis, they're out after chamois deer and goats in the South Island and get some nice animals. I am a fan of hunting bear with hounds. Whether or not you shoot them in the end, the hound work is extraordinary. 2016 Idaho Bear Hunt with Hounds has Switchback Outdoors TV out on an action-packed bow hunt with hounds. Another good-looking hunt from the USA is this Louisiana wood duck film by Louisiana Wetlands. Great photography and capturing the spirit of the sport. Just where are the fun guns these days? If guns can be said to be fun, well, with or without guns, Las Vegas is fun and the shot show there is a good place to start for innovation. This is one of a couple of films about the SHOT Show 2017, Industry Day. This is another, and it is by our old friends at Gunblast.com. The Industry Day is the one to watch. It's where everyone gets to try the guns the rest of the week. They'll just be feeling them in booths under the Venetian Hotel in the heart of the Strip. And finally, with Burns Night coming up, the remarkable Butcher of Worcester, Scott Ray, has come out with a game recipe for haggis. It is a double boneless pheasant breast and a parcel stuffed with haggis served on neeps and tatties and with a whiskey sauce. He calls it, of course, the Flying Scotsman. That's it for this week. Links are in the description if you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the Weekly Top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. A lot to get your teeth into there. And as David mentioned in news, we have an interview with Pete Warren. 
As you probably know, rhinos are about to become extinct, partly because of poachers, but mainly because the lily-livered aunties who run our governments won't legalise the trade in rhino horn. Find out how that will help. Be informed in pub debates by clicking on the link on the screen to watch it. And we are back next week if you haven't done so already. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page. And we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And for great kit from the SHOT Show in Las Vegas to go out this week, here is a selection.